In section three, we're going to talk about applying basic analysis techniques, and we're going to do this through two ways. The first is to talk about business intelligence or some ways that you can interact with standard business operating tools like Microsoft Excel, not necessarily to do analysis, but in part to be able to give downstream users the ability to do their analysis or to take advantage of functions available within spreadsheets. The second is we're going to go through and we're going to look at some of the data that we could generate and do a series of time series predictions to take a set of given values and predict what would come next. Now we're going to talk about the role of business intelligence or taking advantage of Microsoft Excel in order to leverage some other capabilities within your application that were written by someone else. And the way that we're going to cover this is the role of saving time with Excel in terms of functions that you yourself have to develop and code that you have to work on. And we're going to talk about how to update spreadsheets using a library called Apache Poi, which is the way of interacting with Microsoft Office files. Now the reason that I interact with Microsoft Excel quite a bit is there's a common developer problem that we run into where someone comes to us and says, hey, can you work on this feature? Or, you know, oh, you have that feature, but I just want something a little bit different. And then someone else comes along and they ask a totally different question. And the catch is you have limited time in which to make these changes and you want to be able to take advantage of tools that those other people know. And you also want to be able to validate any types of data that you are going to work with. And someone's always going to come along and they'll ask for, well, can I get the raw data? Can I get that full level of visibility rather than just having to go with the visualization or what the application shows me? I want to deal with the whole thing. Well, okay, we can take advantage of Microsoft Excel and other capabilities and give them all of these while saving ourselves quite a bit of time. Now, the common tools that you're going to use to interact with spreadsheets are something called Apache Poi, lets you read and write Microsoft Office files, including Excel. And there's another tool that you can use to generate spreadsheets called Eclipse BERT if you have a reporting function. It's just a nice way of generating reports or giving things that people can use in output. Now, in terms of editing spreadsheets, it's much easier if you make a spreadsheet template before you have to write it in code. And the reason is that it's easier to update than it is to create raw, and you can insert data into that existing spreadsheet. Now, Excel, you can deal with CSVs or Excel format. And the reason that you might want to deal with the XLSX format is that it can format dates, currency, and a variety of other data types. So if we come into my write Excel demo right here, I have with quotes, and then I'm going to read something called preformatted.xlsx, which I'm going to switch over to here. And I'm going to go and open my preformatted Excel file. And there we go. You'll notice over on the left is a CSV where we have uh, all of the elements written and date, open, high, low, close, and volume. And over on the right side, we have it presented in a little more of a tabular format. It's the Excel file. It looks like a table. It's got banded colors. Instead of nine hyphen May, you can see that all elements in the first one are dates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read that uh, without quotes, and I'm going to put all of the values into this pre-formatted table. So if I run this application, what we're going to do is we're just going to copy the data between each of these. And you'll notice we have to deal with uh, creating a date format. We want that format to be MDY. And this is the way that we set up the types that our Excel file is going to show. Now, one thing that we do have to do in terms of Excel, you want to set a missing cell policy. So we'll create null as blank. And that's how we deal with uh, empty cells right there. And then in each, we say set cell number, row one, two, three, four, five. So the quote open, high, low, close, and then the volume. That's how we ultimately enter our values in. But for the date cell, we have to set a cell value because dates are not just numbers. And then here, set cell number. You'll notice we just go through and enter the cell in place. If I reopen my file after running, whoop, there we go. So with quotes over here, we'll notice we copied all of that information out of the pre-entered one where it was just a CSV file. And now over on the right, we have our table format all formatted. We see that all dollar values have the dollar sign next to them, and we can start taking advantage of a variety of Excel functions in order to filter and operate on this table. So any user who comes to you and says, well, can I get access to the raw data? This is a very handy way to get them access to the raw data because you can do things like filter on dates that the close price was above $20, and then they can go in and they can start to do functions in here and say things like, well, average close and then average 
coverage of typing Excel functions for whatever column they want, so E colon E, and you can just start to do a series of calculations on this because it, everything is already in Excel format. So it's a handy way of being able to give your users something that they already know how to do. So now if I go to run my read Excel demo and I read my with quotes, what I'm going to do here is to create a workbook based on that particular file so that I can read all of the elements in and I'm gonna be able to print out all the values within that cell. You actually need to have them closed first because Excel creates a lock on the file. So just a second here and we'll rerun this application. As we go to read all the values in from this Excel file using our uh, workbook reader, and we read each element here as a cell reference. So workbook.getSheet at zero because we only have one sheet, and we have a formula evaluator right here. So we want to get that formula that we typed in to calculate the average. So within our output right here, you'll notice we key off of the type of value that each column could be. And we have one special one for formula where we say cell.getCell formula and then the evaluated. So this evaluator.evaluate is a nice way of getting whatever function people typed in. So if any user comes to you and says, well, I have a special calculation that I like to do on this file. There we go, formula average E colon E, and then it gives us the average. Your average user will type something more complex than average, but the gist is now they have created the function in Excel. You can read the value from that function and you don't have to rewrite it in Java in order to work. Now, another thing that people might want to do with Excel is to load data from web applications. So Excel has a nice feature called get external data from web. That's a handy way of pulling data into a file. It loads it into tables. And one of the challenges that you'll run into is that it does not stay synchronized with that external website. So you just need to refresh that data every once in a while.